the hit Netflix series Stranger Things has done a great service to its viewers. While it has an excellent story with a good sense of mystery, humor, horror, and a lovable cast, what I'm talking about is... Mouth breather. Mouth breather. I was tripped by this mouth breather, Troy, okay? Mouth breather? Yeah, you know, a dumb person. The phrase actually only comes up three times, but hopefully it made viewers more aware of how they are breathing throughout the day. As the character Will explains, mouth breather refers to a dumb person. But is it because leaving your mouth open just looks dumb, or you could say the person is dumb for not being aware of their own face, or does breathing through the mouth actually decrease intelligence somehow? Actually, there is evidence that simply taking air into the mouth rather than the nose can result in reduced IQ. A systematic review of medical literature done by the Federal University Sergipe in Brazil found that after applying certain criteria, overall, 80% of the articles showed a higher incidence of learning disabilities among mouth breathers, concluding that this systematic review has shown that mouth breathers are more likely to have learning difficulties than nasal breathers. In the book Adenoids and Disease Tonsils, Their Effect on General Intelligence by Margaret Rogers, she quotes an H. Addington Bruce saying, Mouth breathing means difficult breathing, and this in turn means deficient oxygenation of the tissues, with a resultant lowering of vital activities generally and of the activity of the brain in particular. George Catlin, author of the 1869 book Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life, stresses the importance of breathing through the nose at all times, while awake or sleeping. He says, there is no perfect sleep for man or brute with the mouth open. It is unnatural and a strain upon the lungs. And he describes how impressed he was to see a Native American woman gently press the lips of her baby to keep its mouth closed while sleeping. But how could simply getting oxygen from one route rather than another be so important that it affect your cognitive ability or anything else? Well, the nose is extremely complex and takes up much more space than just the knob on the middle of your face. That's only 30% of it, and the other 70% of the nasal cavity is deep within the skull. While smell is a very important sense, it wouldn't be necessary to allocate all that real estate unless the nose had some other important responsibilities. When someone breathes through the mouth, they are bypassing several critical functions of the nose. To name just a few, the nose filters, warms, and moistens the air you breathe to make it more suitable for your lungs. Nasal breathing also increases levels of nitric oxide, a key signaling molecule used throughout the body. Another very important function of the nose is that it regulates airflow and helps prevent overbreathing. So how can you overbreathe? Well, breathing in and out more air than necessary results in hypocapnia, or a state of reduced carbon dioxide in the blood. This is why people breathe into a paper bag when hyperventilating from intense stress or an anxiety attack. The excessive breathing depleted too much carbon dioxide, so the bag helps trap that carbon dioxide they are exhaling and keep it in the body until the carbon dioxide blood levels and breathing rhythm return to normal. And here's a key point in why mouth breathing can affect people's intelligence. Breathing through the mouth during the day or while you're asleep not only means the air is not conditioned by the nasal cavity, but you tend to exhale too much carbon dioxide. Each 2.5% drop in the partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide reduces blood flow to the brain by 2%. In other words, oxygenation of your brain significantly decreases when you breathe too much. The loss of carbon dioxide from improper breathing isn't drastic enough to be easily noticeable. But over time, the habit can take its toll on the brain and body. But this is a bit counterintuitive. How could taking in more air through a bigger passage, the mouth, lead to less oxygenation of your tissues? People mainly think of oxygen when discussing breathing, but carbon dioxide is a key factor in this equation. As Patrick McKeown, author of The Oxygen Advantage, explains, the amount of oxygen your muscles, organs, and tissues are able to use is not entirely dependent on the amount of oxygen in your blood. Our red blood cells are almost always saturated with between 95 and 99% oxygen, and that's plenty for even the most strenuous exercise. So, since your red blood cells are already saturated with oxygen, taking in more oxygen with big breaths isn't going to do anything. What is important is getting that oxygen out of the red blood cells so it can be used by the body. 
and carbon dioxide is what allows for the release of oxygen from the red blood cells. This physiological phenomenon is called the Bohr effect. It was first described in 1904 by Christian Bohr, and it states that hemoglobin's oxygen binding affinity is inversely related to both acidity and the concentration of carbon dioxide. Hemoglobin is the protein inside red blood cells that carries oxygen. An increase in carbon dioxide decreases blood pH and hemoglobin proteins release their load of oxygen, so it can be used by the muscles and organs. A decrease in carbon dioxide increases pH and causes hemoglobin to hold on to more oxygen. That is, the oxygen stays stuck to the hemoglobin, so it's not available for your tissues to use. If you're taking large breaths through the mouth, you're going to exhale and lose a proportionally large amount of precious carbon dioxide. Patrick McKeown explains that if we breathe a lower volume of air by breathing in a slow, controlled fashion through the nose, we increase the amount of carbon dioxide inside us and can deliver more oxygen to our muscles and organs, including the heart and the brain. Scott Jurek is one of the most dominant ultramarathon runners in the world, winning many of the sport's prestigious race events multiple times. He won the 100-mile Western States Endurance Run seven consecutive times. In his memoir, Eat and Run, he says, One of the most important things you can do is to breathe abdominally. And a good way to learn that skill is to practice nasal breathing. The Tarahumara native Indians of Mexico are able to run up to 62 miles a day, twice that of a typical elite athlete. Studies of the Tarahumara show that they breathe almost entirely through the nose. Of course, there are other factors that allow them to accomplish such impressive feats of endurance, but... This is an excellent display of nasal breathing during athletic performance. Anthropologist Wade Davis has studied and lived with 15 different groups of indigenous people, including the tribal hunters of the Amazon. While staying with the tribe, Davis was allowed to accompany them on hunting expeditions. Hunts began in the morning and they would persistently chase animals at a jogging and running pace over many hours. After a while, the animal would collapse from exhaustion and they would then kill it at short range. Davis was most impressed by the fact that these hunters never opened their mouths to breathe during the hunt. To maintain proper carbon dioxide levels and better facilitate the oxygenation of the body, you'll want to lower the volume of air you take in and out over time. What that means is while taking deep breaths can be good, taking deep breaths quickly is not. Some well-meaning yoga instructors teach that you should take deep breaths that expand the lungs but fail to stress the importance of having the breath be slow and controlled. In the Hatha Pradipika, a seminal text of Hatha Yoga compiled in the 15th century, one of the passages says, Just as lions, elephants, and tigers are calm and controlled, the breath too must be controlled by slow degrees. Hasty or forceful breath kills the practicer himself. In the animal world, mouth breathing is a rarity to the extent that it is usually a sign of illness. Farmers know this, they will immediately know if an animal is sick or not by noticing whether it breathes through the mouth. Aside from dogs who pant to regulate their body temperature when they're hot, most all land mammals regularly breathe through their nose except in times of distress. In humans, chronic mouth breathing can lead to cavities, gum disease, lowered immune function, digestive disturbances, poor sleep quality, and can result in crooked teeth and even poorly developed facial structure. During the 1960s, dentist Edgel Harvold conducted a number of experiments where young monkeys' noses were blocked with silicone nose plugs. This caused these monkeys to breathe through the mouth, and they gradually acquired a facial appearance different from the control monkeys. The mouth-breathing monkeys developed crooked teeth, a lowered chin, and other facial deformities. Essentially, mouth-breathing leads to a longer face with a set-back jaw, less pronounced cheekbones, and restricted airways. I've sometimes wondered why athletes usually tend to be pretty good looking. I figured there would be an equal amount of facially challenged athletes as there are attractive ones. Patrick McKeown's argue that breathing plays a role here too. Because the athletes had been breathing properly, it set them up for better physical conditioning as a child, meaning better sports performance. And proper breathing supports the development of good facial structure. Now, I've only covered some of the important aspects of nasal breathing. Check out the book The Oxygen Advantage for an impressively thorough exploration of this topic. But I'll leave you with one important tip to help you get the most out of your breathing. Just put some micropore tape on your mouth when you sleep. 
As weird and slightly scary as that may sound, the quality of sleep you get from ensuring that you breathe through your nose will definitely be worth getting used to the tape. This has helped me personally, and even people with asthma report that this drastically improves their quality of sleep. Of course, it's best to avoid this if you have certain medical conditions, or in certain situations like after drinking alcohol. After wearing the tape for about 3 months, it should have you naturally breathing through your nose during sleep, and improve your breathing pattern during the day. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. They make the process of making a website super simple. They have beautiful award-winning templates to choose from, and picking your domain name is really easy. There's no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and it's got 24-hour customer service. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com and enter the offer code WIL to get 10% off your first purchase.